Now we are going to study about integer programming, goal programming and non-linear programming. In the previous chapters, we have studied about linear programming. Now we are going to understand what's the difference between linear programming and integer programming and how could you solve problems using integer programming. So integer programming, there is also binary variables, meaning the variables are, can contain only values of 0 or 1. Then we will study about goal programming and non-linear programming. Basically, there are certain cases where the assumptions that are required for linear programming are not possible to be met. In that case, we have different types of mathematical programming available. One type is where in a problem, in a technical problem or a business problem, you have variables, but these variables can only have integer values. Then we will use what is called integer programming. Number two, there are certain problems where we have multiple objectives to be met. Using linear programming, you cannot meet multiple objectives. So we will go for what is called as goal programming. A third scenario is where the objectives or the constraints are both are non-linear in nature. Non-linear meaning 25x1 minus 0.4x1 square. x1 square is not linear, it's a non-linear type. Nonlinear elements, nonlinear constraints or nonlinear objective functions cannot be solved by linear programming. So let's start with the first one which is called integer programming. In the case of integer programming, you have one or more of the decision variables which is supposed to be only integer in nature, it should be integer value, not floating point values. There are three types of integer programming problems. One is called pure integer programming. Here, all the variables involved are integer values. Second type is mixed integer programming. Here, not all the variables, but some of the variables are integer variables. A third one is of 0, 1 integer programming. This is a special type where all the integer variables you have can hold either 0 or 1 value. So, it is binary type. So, if you want to solve a programming, solve a problem which is integer programming problem, it is much difficult. It also requires a lot of time compared to solving a linear programming problem. Let's take an example. A company has two products. One is called chandeliers. The other one is called feed fans, ceiling fan and fashion chandeliers. So to do it, it takes about two hours to wire each chandelier and three hours to wire a ceiling fan. And they have to do so two processes has to be done. One is called wiring. The other one is called assembling. For the assembling, they will need six hours for chandelier and five hours of assembling for fans. They have only 12 hours of wiring time and 30 hours of assembly time available. And if the chandelier is produced, it gives you a net amount of $7 and a fan gives you a net amount of $6. So if you use a linear programming formulation, you want to maximize the profit. So 7 into x1, where x1 is the number of chandeliers produced, plus 6 into x2, where x2 is the number of ceiling fans produced. Constraints 2x plus 3x, 2x1 plus 3x2 is less than or equal to 12 because the wiring hours you have only is 12, maximum 12, so less than or equal to 6x1 plus 5x2 is less than or equal to 30 because we have only 30 hours of assembling hours. x1 comma x2 is greater than or equal to 0 which is the non-negativity constraint. So you can solve this function, solve these things and you can get an optimal solution where x1 is 3.75, x2 is 1.5. The profit is $35.25. So here there is a problem. The problem is this. The planner of this problem considers that it's an integer problem. So he cannot use x1 as 3.75 and x2 as 1.5. He should use x1 as some kind of integer value. x2 also should be integer value. So if he applies x1 as 4, x2 as 2, he gets a not feasible solution. If he applies x2 to 1, so x2 becomes 1, x2 equal to 1, he gets a solution, it's a feasible solution, but it's not an optimal solution. So the process by which you can try like this, you can try for all feasible options, put all the values, see what is the output you get, what is the profit you get, and then you decide. This kind of trying for all of them is called enumeration method. But enumeration method is not possible if you want to try for a huge problem. So here you can see this table, they have tried the enumeration method. They put chandelier 0, fan 0, see the profit. For each one they have tried, okay? So that it matches the constraint and see what is the maximum they can get. So he gets some value. Optimal solution is $35, which is the profit you can get using an integer programming problem. The issue here, there are a few points to be noted here. Number one, 
the optimal integer solution is less than the optimal linear programming solution. So using linear programming, you got $35.25. Using integer programming, you get only $35. The 0.25 is lost. And in a summary, you can say an integer solution can never be better than an LP solution and is usually a let lesser value, not equal most of the time, a less value is what you achieve. So these could be solved using some software to get an answer like. So next, let's see mixed integer programming problem. Here is a mixed problem. So here, only some of the variables are integers. Others can be real numbers of floating point values. So a company called Bagwell Chemical Company produced two industrial chemicals. One is called Xyline. It must be produced in 50 pound bags. So each one is a bag. And then Hexel is sold by pound and can be produced in any quantity. So these two items, these two chemicals are made up of three ingredients, A, B, and C. Bagwell is sell, uh, sells Xyline at $85 a bag and Hexel is 1.50 pound per pound. And the various other constraints are given here. You can see ingredient A, the maximum they can produce is 2,000 pounds and what is the cost, um, what is that proportion in Xyline and Hexel is given, okay. For each A, B, C is given. So you can come up with a linear programming problem for this. X is the number of 50 pound uh, bags of Xyline, Y is the number of pounds of um, Hexel. And here you can see X will be an integer but Y need not be an integer. You cannot say half a bag, you can only say bag 1, 2, 3 like this, should be an integer. So maximizing profit, $85, 85 into X plus 1.50 into Y, subject to constraints, 30X plus 0.5 Y less than or equal to 2000. Remember the maximum is 2000 available for ingredient A, 18X plus 0.4 Y less than or equal to 800, 2X plus 0.1 Y less than or equal to 200. X and Y are greater than or equal to zero and X is an integer. So this is a mixed integer problem. Y, X is an integer, Y need not be an integer. There is no constraint on Y on this. Uh, next type of issue is modeling with 0, 1, which is binary values. So here is a situation where if you put a 0, it means the condition is not met. If you put 1, is a condition is met, then the condition is met. This is called binary variable. This is commonly used in a problem called assignment problem. Here we have some jobs and some individuals. If you assign a job to an individual, individual then you give a value of 1. If you don't assign the job to an individual then you give a value of 0. So this is called 0 1 problem or binary problem. Here is an example. Capital budgeting example is given to you. Here is a problem where they have some projects and they have some budget limitations and they want to see whether they can go for this or not. So if they can go it becomes 1. If it is 0 means they are not going for the budget. Sorry going for the project. So here is a company, QMO Chemical Company. They have three uh, improvements they want to make. Uh, it is new catalytic converter or a software problem or expanding their storage warehouse. Obviously, they can't do all the three at a time because they have some budget limitations. Total fund that could be used in a year is less than or equal to first year is 20,000. Second year is 16,000. And the net value, net present value of each project is given to you plus the year expenditures are given to you. So if you go for the catalyst converter project, if you fund the project, x1 is a variable, it's a binary variable. If it is 1 means you go for that project, 0 means no. x2, if it is 1 means you go for the software project, 0 means you don't go for it. x3 is like for the warehouse expansion. So the maximization problem here, 25,000. Why 25,000? Because of the net present value for catalyst is 25,000 into x1. So if catalyst converter is funded, then X1 becomes 1, so you will get 25,000, okay. If it is not, then it becomes 0. This is 0, so 25,000 to 0, you get 0. 18,000 X2 plus 32,000 X3 and the constraints are subject to constraints, 8,000 X, X1, so 8,000 because of the first year here. So we are looking for the first year budget is 20,000, among them 8,000 into X1 plus 6,000 into X2 plus 12,000 X3 is then equal to 20,000. And for the second year as well. And here there is, this is a binary um, problem. So x1 plus x2 plus x1, x2, x3, not plus x1, x2 and x3, all of them can be 0 or 1, okay. And you can solve these kind of problems using some software and they have got the optimal solution. So they are funding x1 and x3 projects, which is a catalyst and the warehouse project. The middle one, x2, which is a software project is not funded and the maximization profit is also given to you. You can have some other constraints. For example, 
let's say the company comes up with uh, some conditions like that it should not choose more than two of the three products then you can say x1 plus x2 plus x3 is less than or equal to 2 okay so because x1 can be 0 1 x2 can be 0 1 like this so if two of the projects are selected then 1 plus 1 is 2 less than or equal to 2 if they can say that the constraint is exactly two projects has to be funded then x1 plus x2 plus x3 is equal to 2 that is a constraint okay sometimes one project depends depends on the other they could say like for example right you could go for catalytic converter only if the software was purchased so software is x2 catalytic converter is catalytic converter is x1 so x1 is less than or equal to x2 so meaning only if x2 is purchased then x1 can be purchased so if x2 is 0 means i am not purchasing the software then x1 cannot be 1 it can be 0 finish you cannot go for it similar if x2 is 1 then i have the right to go for catalytic converter or i might not go for it okay so x1 can still be 0 while x2 is 1 so x1 is less than or equal to x2 so you can rephrase it like x1 minus x2 is less than or equal to 0 <coughs> if you have another constraint like Either you go for both catalytic, catalytic converter and the software project or you don't go for anything. Both of them are not selected. Then you can say x1 is equal to x2 which you can rewrite as x1 minus x2 is equal to 0. Here is an uh, example scenario where is a company they are planning to build at least one plant and three cities are being considered. It can be in Texas which is Baytown and uh, Louisiana and Alabama. So they have uh, some of these constraints, total production capacity should be at least 38,000 units each year. And if the number of units produced at some specific plant is zero, okay, if they are not building the plant, then the production is zero. If they build it, it cannot be more than 21,000 at Baytown. Similar, if they build it at uh, Lake Charles, it should be 20,000 20, max, maximum production. Otherwise, it will be zero, okay, if they don't build the plant itself. Similar for the other one as well. If they built at the mobile plant, then if they built it is no more than 19K. Okay. So the values are given here. The fixed cost is given. The variable cost per unit is also given. So from these things, we can come up with the constraints. So first point, if the factory is built at Baytown, then you say X1 is equal to 1. Otherwise, 0. Similar for Lake Charles and for mobile, three places. And the number of units produced is given as X4, X5, XA. So these are the decision variables. Three of the variables are binary variables, remaining three are just normal variables. So you can come up with your constraint, uh, your uh, objective function, 340,000 x1. Why 340,000? If you go to our uh, definitions here, the annual fixed cost for Baytown is 340,000 and for the next one is 270,000 and so on. So x1 means whether it is being built or not, it can be 1 or 0. And you can say plus 32 x4. What is 32? This is the profit you get per unit. Okay per unit for Baytown and per unit for others. So X4 is the number of units you produce. So you multiply um, 32 into X4 plus 33 into X5 and so on. So X4 plus X5 plus X6. So remember, at least you should have 38,000 units produced. X4, which is the number of units produced by Baytown is less than or equal to 21,000 X1. Why X1 here? Remember X1 can be one, X1 can be zero. If you build the plant, then it is less than or equal to 21,000. If you don't build a plant, it will be 0 here. So it's less than or equal to 0. Similar for the others. Okay. So this is like the decision 1. If it is 1, then x4, number of units you produce is less than or equal to 21,000. If this is 0, which means you don't build a plant at Baytown, then x4 will be less than or equal to 0. And the values are given. x1, x2, x3 is either 0 or 1. So these are binary variables and decision variables so x4 x5 x6 greater than or equal to 0 and they are integers okay they should be integer they cannot be uh, other values and the optimal solution is given using some software you can calculate them you can get the optimal solution here is another example here it's a financial investment example where uh, a company specialized in oil stock portfolios it has some following constraints the constraints at least Two Texas firms must be that must be used in the portfolio. No more than one investment can be from a foreign company. One of the two California oil stock must be purchased, and it has a budget of uh, three million. 
So for each company, there are seven company names given, some of them from Texas. So you can see number one, number four, number five are from Texas. And the annual return is also given. Cost of uh, block of uh, shares are also given to you. So if you want to put the equation, the objective function here, 50 into x1. So if you go for the first one, 50 into x1 plus 18 into x2 plus 19 into x3 and so on until you get a maximizing the return. Subject to constraints because remember the constraint was at least two Texas. So Texas are x1, x4, x5. So x1 plus x4 plus x5. What is x1? x1 means if you if you use the trans Texas, then it will become one. Okay, it's a binary variable, can be either one or zero. All right, x4 is also all the variables are one or zero here. So x4, if you if you have the company house on Houston Relink, then it will become one. If you don't have become zero. So it should be greater than or equal to two because it says at least two. Foreign x2 and x3 are foreign companies, British and the Dutch, both of them. You can have maximum one of them, not both of them. So it's less than or equal to one, or maybe you don't have any of them. California, it says must have one of them. So six and seven, they are from California. San Diego and the California, they are from California. So x6 plus x7 is equal to one. And there is a maximum amount you can spend. So you put the constraint, which is a three million limit. So um, you can see 480 into x1, because you can see this is all in uh, millions return to you. 480 for um, stock of trans um, Texas oil and similarly for British Petroleum is 540 and so on. So for each one you multiply them less than or equal to 3000 which is the maximum limit. All the variables x size are 0 and 1. So they are binary variables. They can only take value of 0 or 1 here. Let's move to the next topic which is goal programming. Let's say most of the firms, most of the problems might have more than one goals. So linear programming or integer programming, they only have a objective which is measured in one dimension only. So you cannot have multiple goals to be achieved using a linear programming. Okay, unless you put all of them in one single unit format, then come up with an objective function. Okay, so goal programming is used as a supplement for linear programming. And you can see here we want to achieve many goals. Right, so companies come up with multiple goals and they can give priorities also. So higher priority goal, lower priority. So you don't need to satisfy all the goals, but you can try to reach um, the higher ones will be satisfied first. So here we might not go for an optimization solution. We go for a satisfying solution, something which satisfies the goals like. So there's a big difference between goal programming and integer programming or linear programming. The main difference is in the objective function. In the goal programming, we try to minimize the deviation between the goals and what can be achieved given the constraint. We want to reduce what is called as a deviation. In the case of linear programming as using simplex approach, the deviations are called the slack or surplus variable. Remember, both of them are not part of the objective function of the linear programming. Why? Because both of them have a coefficient of zero. So they don't impact the optimal solution like. But in the case of goal programming, Right? The previous one is about linear programming. Now about goal programming, the deviational variables, which is meaning the difference between the goal and what can be achieved, are the only variables in the objective function. They are the only part of the objective function. And the objective function is used to minimize the deviation variables, the sum of the deviation variables. So mainly it is to minimize the deviation variable. Let's go back to the same example we have seen before. 7x1 plus 6x2 is to minimize the profit of the Harrison Electric Company problem. Number of wiring hours you have is maximum 12. So 3x1 plus 2x1 plus 3x2 is less than or equal to 12. And the other constraints are given here. x1 is the number of chandeliers produced. x2 is the number of ceiling fans produced. So here, our idea is not to, you know, maximize the profit or to go for a new location. What is our objective is, we want to have to reach a profit of $30 or more. That's it. So this is the thing. Can we achieve it or not? Right. So if you want to achieve it, what is the mix you should have? Right. What is the mix of items you should do or what is the combination by which I can reach this given the constraints? So here we calculate what is called deviation variable. There are two deviation variables. One, either you go beyond the profit. So profit will be $30 is the level given. So you go for $35 profit, which is called D1. D1 means deviation variable number one plus. So overachieving it. D1 minus means you underachieve, you don't reach it. Instead of reaching 30, you reach maybe $20 as your profit. So you will sum this 
d1 minus plus d1 plus this is what you should minimize the deviation should be minimized because i want to reach 30 dollars okay my goal is 30 dollars so you should not overshoot or undershoot okay so this is the point you should minimize your um, deviation you might tell me oh, i don't bother if it goes above 30 dollars but i'm concerned about something below 30 dollars okay then in that case you will, you will go to that example shortly we will come back to that okay so d1 minus plus d1 plus that is what we need to minimize and then subject to the constraint 7x1 plus 6x2 remember the objective function now becomes a constraint here plus d1 minus minus d1 plus remember this is the point here because under uh, estimate okay under achieved which is minus is added and uh, over achieved which is plus d1 plus is subtracted okay subtract the over achieved and add the underachieved and the profit you want at time is 30 dollars plus the others are also included okay the other constraint from the linear programming are included here so here are some points here you need to understand we need to look for each goal if there are multiple goals we have to see for each goal whether we can achieve the goal can be acceptable using underachievement and overachievement sometimes maybe underachievement is not acceptable but overachievement is okay we don't bother about it if overachievement is acceptable like for example if 30 dollars is a profit level given but if you go beyond it i don't care then the plus d1 plus or d2 plus whatever the plus one d plus overachievement is not included in the objective function let's say 35 dollars you get no problem it's good for me then don't include d1 plus in my objective function if underachievement is okay if lower one is okay with me then the minus d minus should be dropped should not be included in the objective function if let's say goal is exactly to be met if i say profit should be 30 dollars you should meet 30 dollars then d minus as well as d plus should be included in the objective function these are the three important points to be noted now let us take some examples let's say a company comes up with multiple goals and all of them have same priority goal number one you want to produce a profit of 30 dollars if possible if possible meaning what 30 31 32 anything more than 30 is okay with me <coughs> goal two you have wiring department they have available hours you should fully utilize so we cannot go down you can go up no problem avoid over time that's a goal three so in assembly department you should not go beyond okay you should not go up overestimate or over achievement should not be there under achievement is okay with that and then you have to meet <coughs> You should produce at least seven ceiling fans so if, remember it's an at least here so for each one of the good please write the deviation variables so d1 minus under achievement of the first goal which is a profit target 30 dollars okay then d1 plus which is the over achievement for the profit target then d2 minus for the wiring department d2 plus d3 minus for the assembly and d3 plus d4 minus d4 plus like this so each goal you have a deviation variable there are two deviation variables per goal underachieve overachieve now some of these things we are not concerned for example 30 dollars is a profit if we get more than 30 are we bothered no we don't care about it so d1 plus is not included in my objective function remember objective function is made up of all the cons all the deviation variables that i am concerned with only and you just add them all the deviation variables like for example if we take the second constraint which is a wiring department the goal says fully utilized available so you can go fully utilized you must not have anything underutilized okay but if you go beyond no problem so that one you don't care about it d2 plus is not considered if you see the third constraint the third constraint says to avoid over time so if you go beyond over time no problem so if it is a d3 plus it's not an issue for me um, sorry avoid over time means plus is an issue i should not over go over time so okay d3 plus is an issue d3 minus is not an issue if, you, if i don't use it fully no problem but i should not go beyond okay so d3 plus is an important thing i want to reduce that i should not go beyond my um, limit i have so it says avoid over time similar for the fourth one the constraint says at least seven okay at least seven so at least meaning the plus is not a problem eight nine ten you go beyond no problem 
but if you go down it's an issue so all those that we are concerned about should be considered in the objective function only the deviation variables and for the all the constraints given to you please change the constraints like this subtract the overestimate which is a plus overachieved which is a plus and add the under underachieved which is minus so plus d1 minus minus d1 plus equal to and you put all the values given to you okay now it is all equal here and remember all the constraint all the variables given to you they are greater than or equal to zero it cannot be non it cannot be negative so they are non negative variables here all right so sometimes company might say okay i have some goals but they are not of same priority they are of different priorities p1 is the most important one p2 is the next one p3 is the third one and so on they can, they can come up with different priorities so for the same problem horizontal electric problem we have priorities now p1 p2 p3 p4 and note p1 is of is of high importance than p2 how much no such point given it's infinitely more important okay there is no values of comparison so automatically we will change our you know, the objective function instead of putting all the deviation variables d1 minus plus d2 minus plus like this we say multiply with the priority p1 d1 minus plus p2 d2 minus and so on the constraints remain the same you don't multiply these priorities on the constraint constraints remain the same so that is given sometimes people might come up in stuff with the priorities they will come up with weighted goals meaning p1 is infinitely better than p2 not like this i would say p1 is two times p2 like this if i come up with some weights okay they are of same priority but there are some weights i can give some weights like so in this case we have to include the priority as well as the weight okay in the deviation variables in the coefficient in the objective functions so here is a constraint added by the horizontal electric company decides to add another goal of producing at least two chandeliers so at least they should produce two chandeliers so simple so i can say x1 is equal to 2 with underestimate overestimate overestimate you subtract underestimate you add this we know already so x1 plus d5 minus minus d5 plus is equal to 2 because it says at least 2 okay so goal of producing seven ceiling fans is considered twice as important as this goal this is the weighted goal okay producing seven which is the p4 if you remember the priority number four with the previous constraint that is twice as important as this goal as this goal meaning this goal refers to producing at least two chandeliers so when you modify the objective function p1 d1 minus plus p2 d2 minus plus p3 d3 minus p4 d4 minus plus it should be p5 d5 minus but now what you are doing because the goal of producing seven ceiling fans is considered twice as important as this goal so we can say for the ceiling fans p4 two times 2p4 okay p4 into 2 d4 minus plus p4 p4 d5 minus so there is a relationship between a weight relationship between how many ceiling fans you produce which is based on d4 and how many chandeliers you are producing so chandelier is p4 then you multiply by 2 because you can see here it says producing seven ceiling fans is twice as important as this goal okay so this is the weight given we are using the same priority but we are giving the weight here again you can solve this uh, function using some tools to get an answer some software can be used to get an answer the last kind of programming you are looking at in this programming problem we are looking at in this chapter is non-linear programming whatever we have seen before the objective function constraints are all linear before but sometimes you can have non-linear like x1 cube or 1 by x2 log x3 x1 x2 so multiplying with one constraint or uh, one variable and the other which is x1 x2 or log of something or 1 over x2 or x1 cube square like this these are non-linear relationship which can appear in real world problems okay it can be either the constraint has non-linearity or the objective function or both okay there are various possibilities of having non-linearity here so computational problems uh, procedures for non-linear may only produce a local optimal solution maybe sometimes you don't get a global optimal solution you get a local optimal solution here is an example given scenario given non-linear objective function with linear constraints a problem is given a company wants to tell two models of uh, toaster ovens one of them is a micro toaster which is x1 
and they have self cleaned toast oven which is x2 and they earn a profit of dollar 28 for uh, micro test toaster and uh, how many uh, they sell doesn't matter okay for each one they get 25 so just multiply it and for the self oven it is given the constraint the, the profit function is given 21 x2 plus 0.25 x2 square so this is the non linearity they are talking about so if you write the objective function objective function is uh, non linear in nature but the constraints are x1 plus x2 is less than or equal to 1000, 0.5 x1 plus 0.4 x2 is less than or equal to 500, x1 and x2, x1, x2, they are greater than or equal to 0, which is non-negativity. So you can see all the constraints given are all linear constraints, but the objective function is non-linear in nature. If you have such a problem, the objective function contains square term and the problem constraints are all linear in nature, then it is called quadratic programming problem. Okay, you can again solve them using some uh, software. The next type, you can have the objective function as well as the constraint all made up of nonlinear uh, stuff, nonlinear variables. Here is a scenario where they have a medical hospital. They depend on two things, number of medical patients admitted and number of surgical patients admitted. And the objective function given is nonlinear and they have three constraints, nursing capacity, x-ray capacity and marketing budget. And you will find two of the three constraints are nonlinear. So here is objective function given and um, the constraints are also given. You can see the objective function is made up of 13 x1 plus 6 x1 x2. x1 x2 is a nonlinear constraint and a nonlinear um, entity there. So the objective function is nonlinear. And if you look at the constraint 2 x1 square plus 4 x2 is less than or equal to 90. So x1 square makes it as nonlinear x1 plus x2 cube less than or equal to 75 this cube makes it as a uh, constraint as nonlinear the third one is a linear constraint so there are two nonlinear constraints and the objective function is also nonlinear in nature this could again be solved using some tools like or some software then you can have a third case where the linear objective is linear in nature objective function is linear in nature but the constraint is nonlinear in nature here is an example uh, they are talking about some company which is producing some items right there are two ingredients rubber is x1 and oil is x2 and the and the cost per item is given and they have three constraints two of the three constraints are nonlinear in nature so you can see the constraints two of them are nonlinear but the objective function is a linear objective function so um, these are various ways by uh, kind of problems you can face and that ends uh, this chapter for you